On the opposite side of the Nile River, in the lobby of the historic Winter Palace Hotel, Howard Carter posted the first public notice of the discovery by him and his patron, Lord Carnarvon, of the almost intact tomb of the young pharaoh Tut Ankh Amun. Carter and his patron had been associated for many years and had finally received the Egyptian government's permission to excavate in the world-famous Valley of the Kings. Theodore Davis, who had previously held the permit, discovered many generally despoiled tombs in the valley and confidently declared upon turning in his permit there was nothing left to find. After six years of fruitless excavation, a water boy working under Carter stumbled upon a set of steps in the very heart of the valley that led to an underground sealed doorway. Carter immediately sent a telegram to Lord Carnarvon, who was in England at the time, informing him that he had discovered an intact tomb. Carnarvon rushed to Egypt, and upon making a breach in the tomb's doorway... Can you see anything? Yes. Wonderful things. Excavation and clearance at the site proceeded deliberately, with a team of experts that represent a virtual who's who in the field of Egyptology. Carter was a strange fellow in many ways, but he had great gifts. He was little short of a genius in the practical mechanics of excavation and in the recording and preservation of fragile objects of antiquity. I suppose most excavators would confess to a feeling of awe, almost embarrassment, when they break into a tomb closed and sealed by pious hands so many centuries ago. Thirty-three centuries had passed since human feet last trod the floor on which we stood, and yet the signs of recent life were around us. A half-filled bowl of mortar, a blackened lamp, the chips of wood left on the floor by a careless carpenter. He had found the outer chamber of what was almost certainly an intact tomb of a pharaoh, the first ever found. But only after every precaution had been taken to preserve the objects from the tomb would he consider opening the second chamber. I carefully cut the cord, removed the precious seal, drew back the bolts, and opened the door. None of us but felt the solemnity of the occasion. In a dead silence, the huge lid, weighing over a ton and a quarter, was raised from its bed. Light shone into the sarcophagus. But how disappointing! The contents were completely covered by linen shrouds. But as the last shroud was rolled back, a gasp of wonderment escaped our lips. So gorgeous was the sight that met our eyes. A golden effigy of the young king of magnificent workmanship filled the whole of the interior. Lord Carnarvon, tragically, did not live to see the final result of the discovery that was to make his a household name, as he died less than six months after his discovery from an infected insect bite. Finally, Almost all of the tomb's contents were catalogued, removed, stabilized, and sent to the Cairo Museum, where they are currently on public display. Tutankhamun, unique among all of Egypt's ancient kings, still rests in his tomb in the Valley of the Kings. <laughs>